While developing APIs for your web application, you might want a way to handle the errors or exceptions and return the appropriate HTTP error code and message to the client. Developers have their ways of sending responses. If not standardized, the code base will have a lot of different ways of sending responses on adverse conditions. In this episode, we present a way that standardizes sending for OX and 5OX. To demonstrate this, we will use a Jin project. We have a simple app that is written in Go. It uses Jin framework and GOM to interact with the DB. We have a layer on top of this app to authenticate the user and restrict access to the application. This app displays a bunch of blogs in a paginated view. Without further ado, let's jump into code. For example, in this sign-up handler, we send bad request response if the email is already registered. There are many ways to do so. One could be using JSON like this. Another way could just sending a status or aborting with a status. Sometimes you want to send a message along like this. Since this is open, different developers can choose to use different keys for the purpose. Let's see how we can standardize this. We added this package to the project for sending 4OX and 5OX. Here we have defined two types of responses. HTML, JSON. We defined another structure, response. This has two fields, message and error. We will use message like a soft error. Here we have defined a function, send error response. This will be used across the handler functions to send responses on errors or adverse conditions. It has these parameters. The context, HTTP status code, response type, whether it is JSON or HTML, the response structure. First, we created a variable, data, that will be sent to the view to display. It is of type gin.h. Next, based on the response type, we send the appropriate response. For example, for HTML, we send HTML response. In the case of HTML, we use this template to render the view. Let's have a look at this. In this template, we display the message and the error. Here, if the message is present, we display the message with blue background. Similarly, if the error variable is there, we display it in a red-colored background. Let's go to main.go and create a new route to test our error response handler. We create a new API with HTTP GET method. The path is TEST. And here is the handler. Let's implement the handler. Let's create a new controller file called default controller. We will implement the handler here. Suppose this API needs a parameter called ID. If the ID is not provided, we will send bad request. Let's read ID.
If the length of ID is zero, we send the bad request using send error response function we created. It takes the context. HTTP error code, which would be bad request. Next is response type. Let's choose JSON for now. Then comes the response structure. We will define only the message here. Let's do proper indentation. We return from here. Else, if ID is provided, we send JSON response. Now let's give it a try. Restart the server. Let's hit the test URL. The error field is empty, and we get the message ID is missing. Inspect the page to find the HTTP status code. Reload the page. It is bad request. Now what if we pass the ID parameter? It comes back with status 200. Let's try the HTML response. Replace JSON with HTML here. Restart the server again. Remove the ID parameter. Now, it shows this alert in blue color since we passed only message. In case of an error, it shows alert in red color. That wraps up our exploration of standardizing error handling within our Gingonic application. By introducing a consistent method for sending HTTP error codes and messages, we've streamlined how our app communicates issues to the client, making the development process cleaner and more efficient. How do you handle error responses in your projects? Have you found a method that works best for you and your team? Share your experiences and tips in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights into web development. See you in the next episode. Happy coding!